Are you looking to improve your game in Destiny? Well, this is just a video for you. This is going to be an ultimate raid guide where I'm going to be covering how to improve your damage, how to prepare for the upcoming day one raid code is end. This video is going to be quite a long one, but I'm going to explain a lot of useful things to know. So I'll separate this video into two parts, one for general knowledge tips and one for day one preparation. First topic of general knowledge, this should help with making your general day run of a raid much smoother than it usually is. And it can also help with your day one experience a little bit as well. There's a lot of subtopics in this section, so I'll go over those real quick. We'll be discussing weapons, abilities, armor, and mods. These will all be related to your gear. And then after we discuss gear, we'll go over different roles that are key for different raid runs. So, starting with gear, there's a lot of weapons, there's a lot of armor in this game, but there is a general idea of what to run in the game. If you're doing ad clear, things like Wither Horde, Forbearance, Revive the Disciple, an SMG, Eager Edge, they all help you in some way to kill enemies quick, keep your health up, get around quickly, which is mostly what you'll need whenever you're doing some form of ad clear. There are other weapons, those aren't the only ones, but that's what I would choose. When it comes to a damage encounter rather than an ad clear encounter, currently rockets are the way to go. You compare this with Izanagi's Burden, which is a very consistent form of burst damage. Rockets like Apex Predator with Reconstruction and Bait and Switch give a massive damage output and using Izanagi's and a special grenade launcher like Wilder Flight with auto-loading Vorpal would be a great mix for that. Using Honed Edge Izanagi Shot, shoot the grenade launcher and then shoot the heavy twice and then rinse and repeat whenever you're doing your damage phases. You'll see an example on screen right now. If the boss requires some sort of other damage that isn't rockets, there are other options for that. Using linear fusions like Cataclysmic with 4th times bait and switch, Using Taipan with Triple Tap and Firing Line, same with Reed's Regret. Briar's Contempt is also up there, so that you can use that for Tormentors or Lucent Hive. Now there are other requirements of damage. Swords are also a viable option. So using Lament or Falling Guillotine with Strand Titan's Banner of War aspect and also pairing that with Syntheseps can actually give you some pretty surprising damage. Double Slug Shotguns are also a wonderful option for burst damage if your heavy is used up by Tractor Cannon or Galahorn by some chance. And if it's a longer range fight you have snipers like Succession or the Aikilo Sniper Rifle with 4th times Focus Fury or Reconstruction with Recombination or Firing Line. Abilities are the next section, which commonly involve Well of Radiance for Warlocks. Well of Radiance gives 25% damage bonus for you and allies, and gives incredible survivability. In terms of armor, Warlocks have a lot of options. Rain of Fire to reload all your weapons with Icarus Dash for basically any scenario. With double slugs, with snipers, with rockets, it's perfect for everything. Sun Bracers is a very high pick choice for clearing through yards, healing with your grenades with the respective fragment on solar. Luna Factions is also great for passive reload speed for all types of weapons. Xenotaph is very good for ammo regeneration as well as Aeons for every class. Hunters have Tether to weaken for 30% which stacks with Well of Radiance. Gathering Storm is also very high damage. Hunters have Lucky Pants to boost hand cannon damage which can actually put up some high numbers. Orpheus Rig is also another optional choice so that you can enhance your tether and Star Reader skills will increase your super damage which I mentioned can buff Gathering Storm. It also works with all supers. Assassin's Kyle is also very good for survivability. Your Falcons can help with survivability and add clear. Titans have Thunder Crash which is a decent super for damage, especially paired with Curus of the Falling Star exotic chest piece. You have Path of Burning Steps for solar weapon damage. Syntheseps can help with solar titan as well as sword damage or just general melee damage buff. Lorely Splendor can help for survivability. Pyrogill Gauntlets is a very high damage super exotic and Heart of Inmost Light can help with your ability uptime. 
armor mods can be great for keeping abilities active and increasing damage. These can change depending on the encounter you're in as well as for the weapons that you're using. For most scenarios you'll want head mods that have ammo gathering and for ability uptime like ashes to assets. For arms you'll probably want mods like firepower or similar to generate orbs with your abilities and some kickstart mods to keep your abilities up. Chest armor mods could have reserves for your rockets depending on which one you use and then swapping for resist mods after depending on the encounter you're in. Leg mods for general play you have different mods that help with getting your abilities back and keeping health up such as better already. Leg mods also have damage surges so solar surge for apex predator for example that helps a lot. Class armor mods have mods like Invigoration and mods to slow down your armor charge decay so that you have Surge mods active for the entire damage phase. These are all very important but ultimately the roles that you partake in when you're doing your raid is actually equally as important. For consistent runs and raids and even in day one you'll probably want people for buffing, debuffing and just doing damage. For buffing, well if Radiance is enough you can use Lumina on top of that to give even more. It gives 35% I believe instead of just the 25 so it is more. Titans have a Sentinel Shield buff where if you shoot through the Sentinel Shield you have 40% damage buff. But I don't recommend this because Boy Titan as a whole lacks a little bit more offensive capabilities than other class, subclass options. So I wouldn't advise using it too much. You can if you want. Having a Galahorn for buffing your rocket damage is also fairly essential. I did also mention that debuffing is a role, so getting into that. It's a very key component of doing damage that not many teams are really using. To debuff a target, you can use Hunter Tether, Tractor Cannon, Felwinter's Helm. Those three options depend on what you're playing, because if Felwinter's Helm is on Warlock, Tether is for hunters and tractor cannon is any class so pick your choose they do all give a 30 percent debuff to any boss or target that you use it on so it also stacks with your well of radiance and your other buffs so it is a big difference maker now when you're using either galahorn or tractor cannon you're going to be kind of limited with your damage options because you're taking the heavy slot for something that's not exactly for damage itself. It's more for weakening or buffing something else. So whilst using those, you could use double slugs, you could use snipers or fusion rifles. I'll put up some perks on screen for certain weapons. In terms of day one scenarios, there's actually a lot of options for you to choose from that could be worth bringing. As I mentioned, the main DPS thing you'll be using is going to be rockets, so Galahorn, Tractor, Izanagis are great for damage. So you'll probably want to bring those, those are pretty essential. When it comes to ad clear encounters, you have Wither Horde for Barons, any kind of auto weapon with kinetic ammo or just primary ammo. Raid launchers for hot swapping with your rockets. Double slugs and snipers are great to bring so that you're not just sitting there with nothing when you're using buff and debuff weapons and you're heavy. And if for some example, let's say the boss is more viable for swords, you still have Lament, Fallen Guillotine and the Banner of War aspect on Titan and Syntheseps to dish out incredibly high damage with swords instead. If we do have another Atrax moment, Parasite would probably be a shout as well. That would be a pretty good weapon to bring. As I mentioned before, Linears, Cataclysmic Titan, Storm Chaser, Rage Regret, Ryer's Contempt are all very good Linears. Going into more niche options that you can bring, you have Leviathan's Breath, you have the Lucky Pants with a uh, respective hand cannon like Malfeasance or Crimson or any 180 RPM hand cannon that has auto reloading perks and a good damage perk. Other niche exotic choices for damage can include Grand Overture, Legend of Acreus, Merciless, Fourth Horseman, World Line Zero, Two-Tailed Fox, but these aren't really consistent because they're kind of standalone weapons, they don't really get major buffs from 
anything else like rockets do, but they can still put in some work. Because Destiny 2 is a looter shitter, there is a lot of weapons and options for loadouts. So if something is not on this list, that doesn't mean it's a terrible weapon or a terrible exotic. It just depends on how you play the game. As long as you're contributing to the team in some way and you're able to put in some work, then you'll be fine. With that being said, this is a fairly long explanation, a little longer than usual. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and like the video and share it around for people who could find some of this information useful. And let me know what you want to see next down in the comments, and I'll see you around next time.